Okay, so I'm here at H-E-B. I just pulled in to the garage and I'm gonna run in and get all of the ingredients that I need for this cheese board. We are going to dinner with, um, or dinner at a friend's house this Friday and I love making cheese and charcuterie boards. Um, and I just decided, okay, I'm gonna make one and bring it with us and my family thinks that they're really cute so I figured I would let you guys know how to make a professional looking charcuterie board um, without having to actually like buy a professional looking one. It's actually super simple and I will take y'all shopping with me. Um, super easy to know what to get. You really just anchor it around cheese, meats, crackers, and then I like to add fruits, jams, and nuts. Six. Um, fruits, jams, and nuts uh, as well as maybe like some little like surprises, like little chocolate things or something. So anyway, I'll take you into the grocery store with me, show you exactly what I get. I'm also gonna be doing my family's grocery shopping or like for my husband and my son and myself. Um, so I'll do like two little separate compartments, but uh, I'll show you what specifically I'm getting for the cheese board. selection was. I had to do it quickly though because I like, didn't want to be annoying and I was also self-conscious like just taking random videos of products in HEB so I just barely got a little bit but headed back home now. I finished my shopping. The one thing I couldn't find was something to put the charcuterie board in or on I guess. It, since I'm going to be transporting it to friend's house I would rather not have to wrap the top like smoosh it all down in saran wrap so I probably will try to find like a little mini crate or something that's not like too deep to put it in so that I can just do the saran wrap across the top to keep it like you know fresh and sanitary with the wine rattling around in the back um but got almost everything we needed and the dinner is not until Friday so I'll go on Amazon and I'll look and see if they have like small or like you know little small crates or something that'll work to put the charcuterie board in. Something I did find that was really cool was these little like clear plastic to-go cup things. So you know if you were to get a side of ketchup or something at a place to go it would come in this little mini cup with the lid. So they had some like that, and they also had, they had three different sizes of that. So I got one of 
each different size. Um, but overall, the total for everything, like including tax, the receipt total was $139. Um, so whatever plus the cost of the whatever I end up making it on like the board or crate or whatever um, I'll let y'all know what the end cost ends up being however I think I should really break it down to an itemized cost for a true cost comparison because if I bought like for instance this little plastic to go cup of things if I bought a whole pack of those where there's like 50 in a pack for three dollars but I only end up using two that would be obviously a lot less, like it's not like I'm giving you all 50 of them. And so if you wanted to make more than one cheese board, so I, I will do a, a per, I'd, I will like itemize the costs, I guess, like break it down to units because I want to show the difference between this cheese board you could do at your house super simply, or is it just worth it to go buy a professional one? So I'll get some quotes on similar looking cheese boards and see if it's worth it to just go buy one but honestly it's really not it's there's they like double the price so of what you can just do yourself so if you're willing to put in the time then highly recommend it and the next part of this video will be the next step which is going to be prepping everything and then putting it all together and kind of the method for how you put it together here i am just chopping up a cucumber i like to make the slices of the cucumber thick enough where you could use it as a cracker if you wanted to, but thin enough where you could put it on top of a, of a cracker. And with the pomegranate, I'll just cut a little triangle in the top, which makes it really easy to take out the stem. And then from there, you can use your thumbs to just sort of break it apart, and this will result in three really nice looking little pieces. So I grabbed some crackers, some little to-go cups that I mentioned, honey, mustard, nuts, Marcone almonds, Castel Vetrano olives, which are the only kind that I like, a bunch of different soft and hard cheeses. Um, I probably will not end up using all of these. There's my sliced up cucumber and all of the fruit has already been washed and prepped. And then I put down some parchment paper inside my little tray uh, just to keep things clean, um, or cleaner and more sanitary. So I like to start with placing um, the bigger items, which I like to think of in my head as anchors around the board. So I'll just make sure that they're kind of spaced out evenly. Um, you'll see I put the grapes in the top left corner, a part of the pomegranate in the right corner. Here's my pimento. And next I'll move on to um, putting some candied nuts that I found into one of the little to-go cup things and putting those on the board as another big anchor. Now I think I should open up one of these cheeses and use that somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the red berry cheese. This one's a mix of cow's milk, goat's milk, um, and something else I can't remember but it sounded good in the store. So because it's a pretty big wedge already, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half so that I can use one of the halves to be sort of the decorative little base on the board. And then I'll cut up the other half um, into what I like to think of in my head as starter slices. And these are just little bits of cheese. You really don't wanna just place a single cube or, or um, wedge of cheese on the board by itself with a knife. I like to make it a little easier for the party guests and and cut a little or a few starter slices so that they're able to just pick some up and it encourages eating. So I'll just clean off my knife and then I'll move on to the next cheese, which will be the goat cheese. So for me, I love goat cheese. One, I love the taste and two, um, I think goat cheese is a crowd favorite on a cheese board. Plus super easy, you just kind of plop it down on the cheese board. So it's worth mentioning that I had just washed my hands prior to starting to make all of this with soap. And I think that it's a lot less gross to have one person whose hands are definitely clean and that person is perfectly healthy um, touching everything as opposed to every single party guest who definitely didn't just wash their hands um, touching everything to try to break it apart. 
So that's why I'd like to just make everything a little bit more, um, I guess, user friendly from that perspective. So here I've got this London Fog cheese, similar to a brie. And um, I just liked the half moon shape of it. And so I've cut up half of it into these little wedges. Um, and then you'll see, I'll just place them as if they're kind of cascading off of the main block of cheese. Uh, and then any future parts of that cheese, um, party guests can just cut themselves. So next, I'm just surveying my cheeses. I think I'll go ahead and cut up this cheddar. I'm struggling here with the wrapper just a little bit. So because this cheddar is already in just kind of a basic square form and people love cheddar, I'm going to go ahead and cut it into three different triangles and then I'll go ahead and I'll take two of those triangles, put them on the board um, and then be able to cut up the, uh, the third triangle and sprinkle those pieces into that little kind of crevice that I've created between the two. And I think that'll just be a really nice little interesting shape and um, a way to display this cheddar. Some of the pieces are breaking apart as I cut it, which is totally fine. I like for my cheese boards to look a little bit messier. And so since the cheese will naturally just break, it makes little easy pieces you can really easily just pick up and put onto your cracker or whatever you wanna eat them with or by themselves. Um, so here I'll just stack them in that little gap. I'm gonna ditch the pimento because I have so many other cheese options and um, not really all that wild about the pimento, plus it takes up a lot of space. And then I'll grab some Marcona almonds, pour them into one of my little clear plastic to-go cups and put those on the board as well. I like to try to space out the little clear cups or if you use um, nicer bowls or that kind of thing on your board to contain things, I like to spread those out so that they're not all clustered right next to each other. Here's another half moon shaped cheese. This one had black truffle in it and I love black truffle. When I was picking the cheeses, I pretty much just picked whatever sounded good to me, but tried to do a range of tastes. Not everything's sweet, not everything's savory, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up half of it into those little wedges and then try to do the same design that I did with that other London Fog type cheese. But noticing on the board, it actually might look a little better if I just cut the entire thing into wedges and made it into a little circle. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I think this is definitely a much better use of space than the pimento, my personal preference. Uh, would be for black truffle over pimento any day. So now once I've placed all my like quote unquote anchors around the board, I like to do the rows next. So this is anything that can be spread out into a row or a snake or whatever. So I'll take half the cucumber and put it kind of wrapped around this black truffle cheese. And then I'll put the other half of the cucumber just somewhere else on the board, spreading out those little kind of cucumber chips so that they're really easy to pick up. So then next I'll open up my crackers. I really like these black pepper and sea salt crackers as an alternative to just basic water crackers. I do have some water crackers, but I don't like to use them if I can avoid it. I feel like these are, the, the crackers should provide their own flavors in my opinion. Um, and then because that one's broken, I'll just go ahead and take that one out of there. So ended up using about half of those crackers rather than the full pack. So that'll be great if I need to do any kind of refilling. Um, and then these phyllo crisps just looked so good. They have like cranberries and little seeds on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them over by the red berry cheese because I think that would encourage people to eat them together. And I haven't tried this yet, but I think it will end up tasting good. ended up using all of those phyllo crisps and so next I'm gonna move on to these flatbreads that are a roasted garlic flavor um, again like the cheeses uh, it's good to have a variety of flavors with the crackers um, not really sure where I should put these but I think I'll just go ahead and kind of wedge them underneath these black grapes 
um, and then just kind of prop up the grapes using those crackers a little bit. So for me, like I mentioned, I like these boards to look a little bit messier, a little bit kind of like a grazing table style cheese board or charcuterie board. And so if you want your board to look neater, obviously putting the crackers and other things in rows would look a little more, I guess, uh, neat, but I, that's not really my style. I'll just go ahead and take the cap off my mustard and place it here in the corner. Important to remember to put in a little spoon or knife that people can use to easily spread the mustard. Next, I'm going to move on to the honey and um, squeeze some of that into one of these little small to-go cup jars. And then I will put that honey on the board, not sure where, but um, because I think honey and goat cheese taste really good together, I'll go ahead and put it by the goat just in case there's any spills. Um, won't be too worried about if the honey gets all over the goat because I think that'll still taste great. So I'm just gonna drain my olives because there's a little bit too much juice and then that allows it to be really easy for me to just scoop them out of the jar with a fork into one of these little cups. Put those olives on the board. Um, like I mentioned, I like to space out the plastic cups, so here looks like a good place that I don't really have already too many bowls going on. And next, I'll go ahead and move on to the meats. So this meat is a soprasada. I have never seen a charcuterie board without soprasada on it, so I think that this is a big crowd pleaser. What I like to do, rather than just placing a slab of the meat as it comes out of the package right onto the board, is make it a little bit easier for people to pick up with their fingers. Um, so instead of having to peel apart piece by piece at the party or at the event, I will just go ahead and do it and then fold it twice, once in half and then in half again to make these cute little triangles which also look really nice all fanned out in a charcuterie board as well so you have an added bonus of that. So I'll end up using all of the soprasada. I think it fills in this gap in my board really really nicely and that's the nice thing about doing this with the meat is you're really if, if you shape them into these little triangles, you don't just have this flat piece of meat or flat like pieces of meat stuck together in a slab on the bottom of your board, you get some height with it. And so I think that that really helps it. It brings everything up a little bit, gives it some more texture, really makes it feel like a grazing table. So next I'll move on to this capicolo meat. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and then after that, I'm probably gonna end up using the salami. And I'm gonna do the same style of folding where I just fold it twice in half so I make these cute little triangles. And I'll go ahead and put it on this far side of the board, kind of squishing it in there next to the cucumber row that I already have set up. And um, I don't wanna bury the cucumber down on the bottom so I'm just lifting some of them up while I put in the meats next to it. And um, it'll be really easy hopefully for the party guests to pick up with their fingers. So ended up using all of the capicolo, again apologies if I'm not saying that correctly, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the salami. Salami, they didn't really have that great of a selection at my grocery store of meats, um, so I just kind of grabbed one of each that I saw that looked good. Not going to bother with the prosciutto today because I think it's really hard to kind of roll up those little prosciutto um, fingers, I guess you could call them once they're rolled up, but so I'll just go ahead and do the same fold of the little simple triangles, make it really easy for myself and really quick with this salami. And because I don't really have that much space left in my board, that's why I've saved salami for last because it's kind of the meat I'm least excited about, but I will finish up these big gaps. So your board should start to look something like this. As you can see, there are still some gaps where you can see the parchment paper through, and this is when we move on to the smaller ingredients. 
So you're kind of going from large to small. And here I've picked up the cherries and I'm drying each one as I put it on the board so that we don't have any unnecessary water or moisture from the cherries getting on the crackers and making them soggy. I'm also trying to find specifically the cherries that have good long stems because that'll make it easier for people to pick up as well with their fingers and they won't have to worry about touching everything on the board to try to get one of those cherries. So wherever I see parchment paper coming through or I see a big gap, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in with these cherries. These cherries do have seeds. These are the Rainier cherries. I don't, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, but they're really good and I really, really like these. Just got them in the, in the produce section and they're not all that expensive. So next I'll move on to my pomegranate seeds and those will fill in that little back corner really nicely. I think that looks great. Um, you can make it easier on yourself by buying these palm wonderful seeds which are already out of pomegranate but I think it's more expensive than if you just um, bought an extra pomegranate and used the seeds from that. But especially in the winter time, because pomegranate is in season, I think it's really, really fresh, tastes great, and is one of my favorite fruits. So I'll use these pomegranate seeds, sprinkling them in wherever I have teeny tiny little gaps or, or I'm able to see parchment paper. And voila, there we go. A beautiful cheese board ready for your next event. Um, this, as I mentioned, is kind of a messier style, more grazing table style cheese board and I hope you love it. And I hope that that tutorial was easy enough to follow. Um, if you like this video, please comment, leave a like down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.